the Word of God says in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 29, Jesus returned to the Sea of Galilee and climbed a hill and sat down. Very interesting. A vast crowd brought to him people who were lame. Observe, a vast crowd, people like that, brought to him people who were lame, blind, crippled, those who could not speak, and many others, they laid them before Jesus. Watch this. And he healed all of them. Amen. The crowd was amazed. Those who hadn't been able to speak were talking. The cripple were made well. The lame were walking. And the blind could see again. And they praised the God of Israel. Please have your seats. And they praise the God of Israel. Today I want to talk to you on the message changed. Changed. Say it with me. Changed. That's right. Changed. Changed. Jesus Christ while he lived in the flesh on the earth dominated the stage that he was brought to. And he baffled the, fad, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he baffled them. The scribes never saw him in any of their lectures or in, in their schools. Yet, he spoke as one that had authority. Jesus spoke as one that had authority. And it seems as though with comfort and ease in the 29th verse, um, Jesus decided today is a day wherein some amazing things are going to happen for people. He wanted the people to or to have it an amazing day. So the word of God says he went and he, he sat down. Verse 29. He went and sat down. He got himself comfortable. And while he was making himself comfortable, the 30th verse says people were just filling the field. Filling the field. A vast crowd. A brought to him. It seems as though they were emptying either hospitals, or they were emptying homes with sick, sick people, afflicted people, hurting people, because they knew that Jesus is in this vast place. He's in this big place, large place. And, and today, things are going to be different since Jesus is here. You know, one, one of the things Hallelujah. that faith does for us is that faith rewards us. Faith benefits us. Because these people, they operated in faith. They went and got these people. And they decided that they were going to have these people made well. That's what faith does. Faith faith challenges you to for things to be made well that's why the word of god says without faith it is impossible to please god he that comes to god must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him those people they had to come to jesus because jesus was not in the valley uh, jesus was not in a in a house per se on the flat, he was up on a hill. So here it is, you had people carrying crippled people to meet Jesus, literally lifting them up and carrying them. 
And the word of God says he healed all of them. Everybody got it. It is amazing that people love to see the spectacular. Um, you know, we grew Covenant House of Praise churches because God gave us the spectacular. Uh, he just gave it to us, you know. On yesterday, those of you who had visited the status, uh, you would have seen, the. I used three crowds. I used the crowd at Mount Hope in the status. I used the crowd at Chagornis, um, Edinburgh section of Sabras in the con. And I also used this church filled with people uh, because we do have the church filled with people when the members decide that they are going to come to church on that given Sunday. And, and, and as a result of, of the power of miracles, um, people came to us at La Jolla. We overflow into the basketball court at La Jolla because miracles were taking place. Every Wednesday, people come to the city, you know, city service to get deliverance. On last Wednesday, we had two persons that were demon-possessed. The demons were cast out of them. And on Friday, in the mid-morning service, um, one person got delivered from demon possession as well. Uh, the church has been called to preach the gospel. The church has been called to preach the gospel. However, the church in today's day is not understanding what the gospel is. The church in today's day is not understanding what the gospel is. You know, Jesus told his disciples in, John, in Mark's gospel, Jesus told his disciples that Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, I take it for granted you were running like you were ready. And, 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 and then he told them to go into all the world and preach the good news. That's what Jesus told his disciples. Go into all the world and preach the good news. In the King James Version, this scripture is read differently. And, and this has been read in so much that there has been a terrible misconception by the church. Misconception by people who follow Jesus because they have been deceived by the twist of the words good news and the gospel. Although people know, lots of people know that the gospel is good news, but people rather think most of us who were brought out, out of Roman Catholicism that our priest would have come to us and say this is the reading of the gospel and he is right but as far as it is understood for most of the hearers is that the gospel is is Matthew's gospel <coughs> excuse me it is Mark's gospel, it is Luke's gospel, and it is John's gospel. And yet it has not hit many believers that the gospel really is their gospel. The gospel is your gospel. So the gospel that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John got is what they were telling from their experience the things that Jesus did. In John's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 1, John properly explains what he is about to do. In St. John's chapter 1 and verse 1, the Word of God says, um, In the beginning was the Word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John is about to explain it. And in the book of 
Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1 and verse 1, this is how Luke puts it, because it is believed that Luke wrote the, the Gospels. We are looking at the King James Version of it, and then I'll come back to this version, Akim. The King James Version of it says, the, the former treaties I have made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Now the word te Theophilus is a Greek name that many people have still up to today. And the word Theophilus is, was not necessarily a person that John was writing to. The word Theo is God and the word Philos is lovers of God. So John was writing this letter to God lovers. He was saying, this I'm writing to people who love God of the things that Jesus do and teach. Now, when we, we look at the book of Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, in the King James Version of it, Oftentimes, we immediately tell ourselves that we are not preachers. In fact, most of you here, as much as you find pastor makes this job comfortable coming on this pulpit to preach, you immediately say, you see me, I ain't doing that. I am not a preacher. So, so what you think as it relates to sharing faith as a Christian person, is that you have to be like you have to become a pastor. You have to study theology, and you have to probably do some serious Bible lessons for you to share your faith. Which is which is a deception that Satan has deceived so many people with, in that the the, the majority of people that come to church, the, mo the majority of people that do church, they don't share Christ. They don't share Christ. Which is, which is totally a misguided concept that you have, that you have to know the Bible to, to share Christ. But I, I want you to know, Jesus is talking to his disciples and saying to them, uh, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Observe, remember when Jesus was talking to his disciples here, and I want you to think, really think, deep, do, do some deep thinking here. When Jesus was talking to his disciples, there was no book of Matthew. There was no book of Mark. There was no book of Luke. And there was no book of John. These four men were in the crowd when Jesus was telling them to preach the gospel. He was telling them to preach the gospel to every creature. Then what is the gospel is the big question here. Since when we grew, over the years we have been heard, we have been hearing, let us read the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you, sometimes, some of you have problems, particularly if you go into the King James Version uh, of the Bible, another modern translation, you, you don't really enjoy reading them. Some of them dull and shouldis and wouldis and the and, and sila uh, and all of these things. And so, so therefore, many of you uh, don't even read the Bible far less to go and talk about the Bible. So, so therefore, how would we represent Jesus? So that within the church, the, which is the, 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 um, the, the, the church, the common church, um, we have people who just come to church. You know? We don't have really people sad to say, who really believe 
Jesus. Because to believe Jesus, it means to, to do what he says. To do what he says. So people come to church for being nice. People be, come to church for being nice. And I'm glad, eh? because I would not like to be preaching to more chairs than people. So I'm glad, but but I don't going to be. I am not going to be to to amen to become guilty of not really telling you the truth about about what, your your coming to Jesus. Your coming to Jesus and the expectation of Jesus is a very serious expectation, because Jesus goes on to say more than this. When he when he say, says it in the in the in the in the in the next version, Akim, Amen. The New Living Translation, that the Word of God says, "Go into all the world and preach good news." Now, let's remove the word "preach" and use another synonym. The, the synonym of my preference is "proclaim." As a synonym of my preference, because the moment people say preach, mean preaching. I I ain't no preacher, you know. I ain't no preacher. But what Jesus is also saying is go and proclaim. Go and tell people the good news. And since they were the guys, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were in that crowd, it means that we have to find out what is the good news that Jesus wants them to go and tell. And and the good news that Jesus is is wanting them to tell is Jesus wants them to tell of their experience with him. The good news, their, their good news that they got when they came to Jesus. So remember that multitude we just read about there um, that was in Jesus' presence, the lame, the, you know, those who were crippled, those who were blind, um, those who were dumb and all kind. Listen to me. Those people, when they left there, the word of God says in the 31st verse, these people, amen, saw something remarkable. The Bible says the crowd was amazed. The, amen. I, I, those who have really found Jesus in their life, those who have really tasted and seen that the Lord is good, they, you are really amazed how you you have been changed. You you have been changed because the Lord Jesus Christ did something for you. The Lord did something for you, and because the Lord has done something for you, Amen. You 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 are going to talk like this crowd was that they were made well. The lame walk, the blind could see, and the word of God says, and they. Praise the God of Israel. They pray. Listen, that, that's what made the, the, the dwelling in a meeting at that time a, an explosive experience that these people were having because the word of God says they had tasted what Jesus was offering. I I want to amen to to, to to bring your attention if you have met Jesus Christ in a real and living way. I want you to know, amen, that you will be able to have that amazement. You would be able to have that praise because you know what the Lord has done for you. You can testify of what the Lord has done for you because, hey amen, you have done like what David said. I have tasted and I have seen that the Lord is good and blessed is the man that trusts in him. Amen. Now I have seen people suck orange and suck pomsi tea and, and suck tambran and listen to me when I see people with orange tam, pomsi tea and tambran my, I even eat out of it you know, and my teeth start to edge me one time because amen I am not a person who could deal with sour 
Pastor, are you anointed for to deal with with sour thing? Amen. More so, the more so the, the girls. Amen. Plum and all them kind of thing. I I don't. In fact, I, I even apples and thing. I have problem with you know because I want to know when I get an apple. If I want a sweet apple, so I couldn't care if the apple is sweet or if the orange is sweet because I know orange and I grew up living close to an orange field. I'm talking about scores and scores of orange. I grew up living just a distance away from Putigal fields. Score. When you watch, when you stand up as a boy and you watch through that, that orange field and that Putigal field, and, and not many people knew about it back then. Amen. Uh, just a few of us had known about it. that field was reject was you know abandoned, and we found it. We used to call it our our field. And we had trees. Everybody had their tree among the boys that I was growing up. When we see we come off our orange tree, and and orange used to grow so low because nobody really even reading that or, exp or experiencing going in that field. There's a pick orange. You gotta bend down sometime and pick orange. Orange. So we know we had the knowledge of knowing sweet oranges, sour orange, acid orange, hard orange. So I, when, when, when you telling me you sucking an orange and you're enjoying it, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is that that orange don't have to be, amen, one that I will enjoy. You know? So you can keep your orange. You know? As far as I'm concerned, I know orange. Uh, I know Portugal. Uh, uh, so you can't fool me with how you face. But you see, the thing about it, your experience is different from my experience. And and I one of the fears that I have is the reason why people behave they be, the way they behave is because they don't know what what a sweet orange is like as yet. You don't know what a sweet orange is like as well. And, but however, some people, as I said, they like sour. So, hey man, do you better don't give me no sour? So because I don't want no sour orange, you understand? But so but you see, why don't we say taste and see that the Lord is good? Eh? Blessed is the man that trusts in him. You have to live with your own experience. That's right. That's right. You have to live with your own experience. And, 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 and do you have, because you live with your own experience when you taste it, your, your experience has to also become relatable. You could, and I'm saying it this way, you could be relatable because of your experience. So that, so that, it is said statistically when it comes to people being influenced by what one person says is that out of every six, one person ac accepts what you have to say. One person out of every six. So, so salespeople going about to sell things, they, they know already, they were trained that way that there are five people who will tell them all move from here and uh, move from and some some people hey man, uh, some community becomes empty when watchtowers begin to walk around uh, all of a sudden everybody don't, everybody don't get luck <laughs> everybody don't get luck all kind of thing when watchtowers start to walk around and then there are some people who would open their doors uh, and, and you you sometimes some of you get mad when you see people open the door and people in, go on, you know, mislead them. But, amen, they, but as far as they're concerned, they went to their Bible class, they got indoctrinated into their Bible class, they have a, a methodology of how they go about and share and carry little books. So whether, amen, you refuse the book or you refuse the book, you think you're you, you embarrassing them, you're not embarrassing them. They, they come already Knowing that out of, out of six, out of six, only one is going to accept what they have. And, and we would stand and we will criticize them as born again Pentecostal Christians. But at the same time, their watchtower halls are full enough with people. And we as a, as a, as a, as a people who say that we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, we are not sharing our good news. We are not sharing our good news. We are not sharing our good news. So the word of God says in the in, 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 Ma, in Matthew 
pardon me, in, in, in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, that we should go and proclaim. Let's take out the word preach. And, and go and proclaim the good news. We need to go on because the, the people out there that need it, we have to share it with them. And, and, and we have to develop the attitude that people may ignore you, the, uh, um, the five may ignore you, but there's one person who wants to listen. You would observe also, um, let me just ju deal with another point first before I come to that point. You would observe also that, that, that Jesus has a strong message behind sharing good news. The next verse. The next verse says, um, anyone who believes and is baptized shall be saved. This is the critical nature of, of the message that we are sharing. Jesus goes on further to say on another passage of scripture that they that are sick need a physician. Jesus goes on to say also that he's, uh, in fact, let's say, let's say the way the Bible says it. In the book of First, First Timothy chapter 2 and verse and verse verse 3 and 4. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3 and 4. The word of God says, This is good and well pleasing to God our Savior. What is good and well pleasing to God our Savior? Is that who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth? So, it's, it's so that we cannot say as believers, who, whose eyes have been opened, whose ears has been opened, whose hearts have been pliable to God so that God could have bring this revelation of being saved to us, that we don't care who he had us in. But sometimes we are not saying that we don't care who he had us, but our, our, our behavior demonstrates, <laughs> are you okay? I don't care about saying anything about Jesus. You know what makes it even worse is that when we ask people in the church to stand up and testify. Now one of the things that we do here is that we try to be cautious with testimony because some people do not understand what a testimony is. They say, uh, they say, I say all kind of uh, things that could cause back an island thing. You people hear it on the outside about about where they do and where they didn't do. So I look get arrested and all because police still looking for you on that case. <laughs> all kind of thing. Uh, all they expose all themselves inside the church. Not even the tape running, the, 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 running in the church, Amen. The 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 social media running in the church. And they know what to find, you know. Amen. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so we are we are real problems in our heart. Um, um, so that so that so that so that we try to control testimony time. But on the other hand, you know the people who jump up to testify, the people who don't know how to testify, them just like to talk. <laughs> and you who, who, who have some kind of in, you know better conduct control behavior who should who should be saying what the good news remember it is it is the good news the good news the good news it is the good news you are sharing with people of your experience the good news of what you are sharing of your experience with Jesus Christ and you are you are out there and and we are begging people to testify and and, and, and next thing, when the people who you know, sometimes when you see certain people jump up to testify, you say, oh my God, look at what he's here today. <laughs> oh God. At that time, you, you sit down there, you ain't saying nothing, but when the, when the, when the ones who you know go put you put we in trouble, jump up, you're getting vexed. I, I want to condemn them. You see, so something is wrong with how we do church. There is, there is something definitely wrong with how we do church. So that what we want aim in here is to understand that this thing about how we, how we are chosen, we are chosen, you know. The will of God says we are chosen. 
We are called, God, amen, we are called. All of us who have accepted Jesus Christ, is, is not that we went looking for God necessarily, is that God came looking for us and he chose us. So he, since he ch has chosen us, he, he wants, amen, to us to also be engaged in sharing the gospel so that we are to tell everybody the good things the Lord has done for us. Amen. Observe, you don't have to be a preacher to do that. Amen. You don't have to be a preacher. It's to preach the gospel, but the gospel is the good news. It's to tell people, because the same disciples that Jesus was talking to in the present when he was here, talking to them, he was telling them, fellas, who we read about now, the, the, Paul, the Pauline epistles, James, Titus, um, and the list goes on, Matthew, Matt, Luke, and John. They had the bad, these guys in day were to tell the, the good news. They, these guys were not Pharisees. They were that belonged to the, 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 the theological schools. These guys were not scribes that were, were writing books about the, about about the theology that they had learned. These guys, these guys were just common men. They were fishermen. One was a doctor. One was a, an accountant. Matthew was an accountant. These people came out from secular fields. And, and, and Jesus was sending them back into their secular surroundings to, to share Christ. They were not going to, to churches to preach to them. They were going to communities. So, to, so that they can impact and change life. And the church grew fast. The church grew fast because people were exciting people yes. with what they had experienced. And as I said, the five out of the six um, refused, but there was the one. And if you notice, there, there is always you know, people who, who, who have need. Let me say it this way. People who have need are people who often come to the church. Your friends, and they will only come here, really and truly, because they don't, they're tired, disappointed. You know? they, they call every go to church, not, no, I me and that church thing. In show them pastors and them looking like they have plenty of money and all that kind of thing. And the whole conversation twists and you get caught to that. And you move from trying to defend your poor pastor. Amen. And the whole thing goes to a long, long kind of thing. And then they hit you another one. Uh, um, you know, you got to have one church close. Uh, you got to have, you see, I have one church, church close to go to church, you know. And somebody just jump up in the crowd and say, Amen. And then people in church don't really know the Bible says. So the Bible says, Render your heart and not your garments, you know. And they and quote a bad piece of scripture there and, 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 and that is not scripture because the Bible never say render your heart and not your garments hey man I don't know how to dress up so to go to church you know what the Bible said render your heart and not your garments because the word of God says rend your heart rend your heart let your heart be broken and torn apart you be tear up before God you know because back in those days they would tear up their garments to show how solemn and how repentant they were before God, you know. But you see, so that the church now feeds, meets a will that is preaching to them, and and it, and it is what we call as as theologians, ICGTN, ICGTN. They they reading things they never really see or or they hear, or they reading into the scripture things that doesn't really exist. At that time. You now don't know the Bible, so you're afraid to talk. You know, you know, so, so it's really and truly, you, if you read, and you're right, yes, if you don't really know much about the theology, don't argue with nobody, you know. But however, you should learn to put up a defense for what, what, for what you believe. You need to put up a defense. So, amen, um, you, you need to come to Bible study. And Bible study has been made easy for us now at Covenant House of Praise is that all you have to do, as long as you are a member registered at Covenant House of Praise, check the, the church's um, feed you know, on WhatsApp. Check the church's feed on WhatsApp and you would see that we have Bible study on a Tuesday. Bible study on a Tuesday. So check the church's feed. And come in. You know, come in. Many of you are not in the Bible study. You need to come in. So you can't really tell anybody much, nothing much. And then 
a little bit of Sunday thing you get. Amen. By the time you don't get two cuss and somebody on, on a job on Monday come with a sour face and treat you bad. Amen. You going back right to feel to fight all kind of thing on, 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 on by Tuesday. You in a bad state by Tuesday. You know you lost your you lost your victory for the rest of the week that you get on Sunday morning from the church. Amen. You 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 in a bad state right away. Um, by the time Tuesday, Amen. By the time Sunday again, you as you see me, you see me. I, I ain't do so good this this week. Now me ain't going to church because I, I Amen. I'm a real sinner here. Yes. So Amen. So people are even serving God as they should. You confused because you really and truly you really don't understand what it is to serve God. You see, and so God wants we don't want God doesn't want nobody to to be to, to be lost, but he 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 wants us to understand there is a there is a, a method in serving God. Amen. There's a method in serving God. Let's go back to Jesus's introduction of the method. Um, Mark chapter sixteen and verse sixteen. So now we tell the people the truth. Because Jesus does not want people to be lost. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. Now, people believe, people believe and are baptized shall be saved. Now, in the, in the, in the modern church that we live in today, is that the church preaches get baptized, get baptized. You know. Everybody should be baptized, and which is right. Everybody should be baptized, um, but it is a twofold process of committing to God: is believed and be baptized. Now, some people baptize. Baptism becomes such a thing now, to, in the eyes of some people and in the ears of some people, that. And then in some churches they practice it. You come, I see. I know one pastor baptized over his whole congregation because God had dropped a wind of grace upon his church and people were getting saved. And he wanted to wash them away from their old church relationship. So he had a baptism of over 400 people that who were mixtures of people from all different churches. He baptized them over into the, into the name of their, his church. So there is a sense of commitment to those people because they are baptized in the church, you know. So there, so and there are some people who misunderstand. I have, you know, while we were growing all of these churches, I had stopped baptizing, and when I had stopped baptizing and I let certain pastors baptize, people felt that they are no not belonging to the church where I lead, but they belong to the pastor who baptized them. Contrary thoughts. Because, um, and then there are some people who, who, who have this attitude. Um, I baptize already, you know, but pastor, I need a rinse. <laughs> I need a rinse, pastor. So some people just baptize for a rinse. Uh, cause they're, not, they're tired cuss now. They want to see if they can fix this thing. So they get, uh, I need a rinse over, you know. Amen. Then the latest one I've heard um, eh, um, is that somebody came to me and told me, I need a wash. Car get dirty, the car get dirty, the life get dirty. I need a wash. You see, you can imagine how the, all you need to really pay pastors properly, you know, you see the, the kind of difficulties we have in, 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 in transporting people to heaven because our job is to plunder hell and you know, carry people to the place where they can go to heaven. Yeah. So you have all of these people who come up with all of these things here. And when you talk to them and tell them your car wash them over or your car get them the rinse, they say they, they go somewhere else and get a rinse. Because yeah. it has some past. They're so glad for people. You know. And they and may not have, have that kind of conviction as others have. But, the, but you see, that's not growing in faith. Is that is that after you have you have received Jesus Christ, uh, you you begin to, to to look at what the the Lord has done for you. Process number one. You look at my, my, I am different. I, I feel different. I know I am different because I've accepted Jesus. Then two, you have to be 
be, you have to believe and be baptized. Because all you will experience, if you don't believe, is that you will go down a dry sinner and come up a wet sinner. But if you believe, you would make advances to, to serve God. You, you would want to serve God because you believe. You understand? Jesus says, it's, it's not the sharer of the word that is justified. It's the doer. It's the, the one who does what the Lord wants him to do. So you, you, you are not sharing your faith. And I, said, I think I was about to develop a point when I said one of the worst things is that when we ask people to testify, the people who should be testifying do not testify. And every single one of us who haven't had an experience with Jesus, if we are afraid to even talk about the Lord among our own brethren, would you be able to want to talk to people who are out on the outside? So that, observe, let's, let's read on. He that believes that will be baptized shall be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. Now, the word condemn, the word condemn is, is, is a strong, very, very, extremely strong word, the word condemn. And when, when, when Jesus is talking about condemn, he is not a jokey word that um, um, PDD is in a separate prison where he has a little more uh, um, safety in, but um, a couple of the news reporters say um, it is not the Hyatt he left that night in the in the suite in the Hyatt uh, uh, that he is going going into. He, uh, in that, it, 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 the next day, PDD appeared in prison in the same clothes he had on the day before. Because as far as he, he, the poor boy is 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 is. is is, is understanding that this is a very distressing period in his life. Uh, he can't walk in there looking like, like 50 cents with a big smile on his face and a, and a, and a hat <laughs> and a big piece of coin and a, a big tick chain. He can't do this. Is this the law? The rules changes when you're condemned. When, you, when you're condemned, you are, put, you are being placed in a place where it, it, um, as far as you, right now you can laugh how much you laugh, you know. Amen. You, know, you, are, amen. you can laugh how much you laugh. One man was in jail laughing, laughing. And next thing you know, while he laughing, laughing, the fight time, everybody comfortable and thing. He psyched everybody in that court. You know what he did? He just lift himself up and dive like he, he's, he did better than, than Phelps. He did better than Michael Phelps. He died from where he was straight on top of the judge in the prison. Wow. Uh, in, in the courthouse. He died. You, you ever see that on, on, on the television? Uh, hey man, the boy just leap past Michael Phelps. He, he broke the record, but they're afraid to give, it the, give, give him the Guinness Book of Record for leaping straight at the judge. Because he realized he's in trouble and he can't handle that judge condemning him. If you all want to hear curses, don't go to hell anymore. Because hell go on. Because <laughs> people are going to be so much in, 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 in judgment and, and condemnation. Hey man, if you don't like cussing, fuck it, because I don't like cussing because you and all will be down there if you didn't make it to heaven. <laughs> hey man, you and all might start cussing. Hey man. But the thing about it is that, is that, is that, is that you don't want to belong to that circle of condemned people. So it means if you do not want to belong to that circle of condemned people, you're not doing it because you are forced to do it. You are doing it because of what you have tasted. You are doing it because of what you have tasted. So that as, as a people of God, I, I want you to know that when we accept Jesus Christ, we are not just accepting a new life where we are going to be in a place of safety, but we are also going to be in a, a place of empowerment. Yeah. We're going to be in a place of empowerment. Every one of Jesus' disciples that accept him, that's every one of us sitting here. God has saved us. Do not just save us to have a good taste of him. But he has saved us to be in a place of empowerment. Watch it, the, the King James Version of this next verse, the 17th verse. And these signs 
shall follow them that believe. These signs. These signs shall follow. Listen, Jesus has a plan. Has a plan for, for you to, 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 to advance in your life forward to affect others. You and I, we, we are going to affect others for good when we commit ourselves to serve Jesus Christ. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Put it up in the New Living Translation, I keep from verse 17. You see, here it is, Jesus Jesus wants us to realize that I, I ain't no, this ain't no play. This ain't no play. Um, no, no, no religion, whether it be Islam or Hinduism or, or whether it be a watchtower or all of these things, none of them accept the fact that you as a believer in 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 Jehovah, a, a believer in, 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 in Muhammad, a believer in Kushna, Ram and these fellas and they is going to give you the power to do other things like ministering to people in this supernatural way. But because you are, you are, you are not born out of just the water, but you are born out of the spirit, this because you have been born out of the Spirit, the Spirit that dwell in you, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7, the Spirit that is, that is born in you, amen, the Word of God says um, in, in the King James Version, amen, that, watch what the Word of God says, um, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. To profit all. To profit all. So that here it is, you are sitting down. You are sitting down on a gold mine. You are sitting down on a gold mine. And, and you are worrying about all the mundane things. You are, you are, you are worrying about all your sickness. So, um, in fact, in some circles, they think that a lot of Pentecostal people are mad people. You trust me. You only see madness yet in I pastor in for, for, for 44 years and, and serving God for almost close right up to 49 years. And so I kind of sometimes, one guy who was in my church um, at one time, I was not a pastor, I was a member, I was in the 49. Um, and, and, and he used to, uh, he used to vibrate. And the pastor would say, uh, brother, please sit down. And he was bold enough and turned to tell the pastor, 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 don't you see I'm in the spirit? <laughs> so, so, so that he, he, is, he is having a reaction for whatever he is feeling. He's having a reaction. Um, but it is not the way to behave it, 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 while the pastor is talking or in the service. He can, you can do that at home if you want to. Or you can, if, you want to, if you want to vibrate straight up to Korea Junction, nobody <laughs> going to stop you because you ain't, you ain't nobody way <laughs> or anything like that. You can afford to, to vibrate <laughs> right up to Korea Junction. And nobody will, 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 will take, all they will be saying, look, a mad man coming on. <laughs> Every time they will see you, people always vibrate coming on your window. <laughs> Again, some space, you know. But you see, the thing about it is that, you know, um, we, 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 have to, we have to understand there is a method. There, there, is, a, there is a common sense approach to how, how you serve your God because you, 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 you want to, you want to to, to, to the, the power of God to, to, to be upon you. You want to be used of God. This is what the will of God says, verse 17 of, of the book of Mark's Gospel, 1670, that these signs will follow them 
that believe. Besides, but you know what, 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 what we're experiencing is that since these signs are going to follow them that believe, and you are not believing to go and do, do anything by sharing good news, there's nobody you would ever be able to testify to say that God used you to touch somebody's life. When, when, when you and I are supposed to be adding value God wants us to add value to this world. Because as we read in the book of 2 Timothy, um, verse, chapter 2 and verse 3, God is not willing that any should perish. Now, the, the, the blood of a whole lot of people are on our shoulders. You know? The blood of the whole lot of people on our shoulders. There are many people you could have told about Jesus Christ, and you didn't. And I, I'll tell you this. You know, one of the things you had always learned, one, one pastor was saying it this way. He said there are people in his, who, who are neighbors to him that he knew that he had to go and tell them about Jesus Christ. And he said he was always going to withhold because he was, he, he was afraid that his neighbors would, even though they knew he was a preacher, that he, when he go to them, they may say, so you're one, you are one of them who, who believe that too. You are one of them about what they say about these people. So you, you, you bold enough to come to tell me about where we already know about all you. Now, so what they already know, but he, he, they, they don't know what he has experienced. Oh, that's right. They don't know what he has experienced. Their neighbors, the neighbors just know he, he's one of them. He said, you know what happened that changed his life in his neighborhood? He said his son was suffering terrible depression. Bad, bad depression. His son does not live by him. Bad, bad depression. And his, he told his son after letting great preachers pray for him, he took his son to the best psychiatrist, psychologist. No one could help him. And he told his son that sometimes you are, you, when, you, when you cannot get help immediately as you want to get help, sometimes you have to be strong enough to live through your situation. Because that's the fact. Sometimes you come and we pray and nothing has happened for you. There are sometimes you go elsewhere and nothing has happened for you. And it's not that these men of God had not ministered to other people and they got help, but it happens that you just, it's not, God is not ready to do your bidding as yet. Remember, God is sovereign. And, and the pastor said, sadly, his son, he hadn't heard for him, from him for 48 hours. 24 hours, 24 hours. My wife is correcting me here. He hadn't heard from him for 24 hours. And he, he just got a scare that something is wrong. So he called the police. And he said, um, I went by my son and the door is locked and I don't want to go in there alone. Sad. And he said, the, the police came and then the police went in. The police came back out. And the police and, and they called while they were in the DMO and the ambulance. And he said, while he stood there, he saw another bunch of people going in. And when they came out, they came out with a body bag. His son was in the body bag. And this, this pastor pastors over 20,000 people. And he said he has baptized over 52,000 people over his life of ministry and could not have helped his son. That was pathetic. He said, but the thing about it is that his neighbors were able to come to him. He said there was one particular neighbor who lived a little distance of him from the corner he had to stop at. And he's always watering his grass and doing work in his yard. And he would watch him and he, when, he, when he passes by, the neighbor knew that he was a preacher and he had attitude towards him. But that day when he was walk, driving down the street after the death 
of his neighbor, of his son. Right? He's driving down the street of his son. He said his neighbor didn't say anything, but his neighbor, his neighbor did this. I see you. I see you. You have my heart. He says his neighbor was able to witness him to him before he witnessed to him. He said that neighbor, he was able to go share Christ with that neighbor. Because why? Pain opens a door for us to talk. Real life. And to attend to people who would have never been attended to without pain. Sometimes you you are in your in your situations and 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 you knew what God has done for you, how He has helped you through your pain and delivered you all through your difficulties. There's somebody who just wants to hear how you made it through. There's somebody who just wants to hear how you made it through. It's not like you're going to tell everybody your business, but you're going to, you want to, to, to share. This is what Jesus was actually teaching, that we need to touch people's lives by letting them know what he has done for you, what he has done for us. And in today's message, you know, I want us, as the message is entitled, Change. I want us to change as a, as a group of believers and, and, and realize that there are people who need us. Five may not need us, but the sixth one need us. We don't know who's the sixth. The sixth one might just be between the middle of the, of the five. Sixth one might be just the one in the middle of the five, or the end or the beginning of the five. And since we don't know which one is the five, we're not going to hesitate. Let them refuse it. Let them be the one that condemns themselves, rather than you and I condemning them. Let us touch people's lives. Let's stand. I trust this message today. Amen. We really come home to us as a congregation. Amen. I want you to lay hands on, on just touch every empty seat next to you. Watch first before you move. Let's watch. Let's watch. Let's lay hands on every empty seat. And say, we are waiting for you. We are waiting for you. Amen. We are waiting for you. Just, amen. Just do it one more time. Amen. And say, we are waiting for you. Just, amen. Just, amen. Amen. Just, we are waiting for you. Amen. You, you, amen. We command you to come from wherever you are. Because we love you. We command you to come from wherever you are. Because Jesus wants to heal you. We, we command that you come from wherever you are. Because Jesus wants to open your eyes. We, we command that Jesus, you come from wherever you are. Because Jesus wants you to walk. Amen. You are lame and Jesus wants you to walk. You are crippled and the Lord wants you to be whole. Amen. The Lord wants you, amen, to experience deliverance. You are broken and you are hurting. The Lord wants to heal your broken heartedness. You are bound and devils are taking over your life. The Lord wants to deliver you from the devils taking over your life. The Lord wants to minister to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today my concern, my big concern at the end of my ser sermon here today is if you heard and understood what Jesus wants you to do. What Jesus wants you to do. What Jesus wants you to do. Today my altar call is going to be different. My altar call is that who is willing to say yes. Yes, Lord. There's a song, amen, that the worshipers sing. My soul says yes, Lord. Yes. My soul says yes. My wife knows the song too. But I would like us to just come and, and just sing that song. And those of you who say, Pastor, I'm ready for change. Uh, I'm tired about it. It's just me. It's just fixing me. God just doesn't want to fix you alone. God wants to fix others. And he's dependent on us so that others could be fixed. 
Don't wait for nobody to come, for you to come. You ask for an excuse if you have to slip through the side of someone in the, in the chairs, between the chairs, and you come and say, Lord, change me. I want, I want to represent Christ. Come right now. Amen. And say, Lord, I want to make a difference. I'm making a, an altar call for people who want to identify with Jesus Christ to make a difference. Come down from wherever you are. You want to, amen, say yes to the Lord. You want to share faith. You're tired coming to church all by yourself. Always by you coming, you and your car coming. When you could pick up. Yesterday I had a young man here, Anderson. He said, Pastor, I went to pick up a, a carload of people. And when I got there, they told me they, they wouldn't be coming again. And I said, uh, you, you want to let that discourage you, Andy? He said, no. He said, I'm going to try to see if I can get them to come again. And I'm going to try to get others to come. Please don't sit in your seat and, and harden your heart when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about making a difference and you need His strength to help you to make a difference. Amen. You don't move because somebody else did move. Move because you want to make a difference. You want, you want to touch people's life. Come. Come on, dog. I'm going to wait for you. Somebody, I would hate for you not to not understand this message I preach here. You know? I would hate for you because you're not doing anything. And I know half of the... Come closer up. Eh? Half of this church should be up here. Come closer right up to the edge of the pulpit. Let's go right up. Amen. Because you're not doing anything. It's time for you to ask God to help you to do something. Ask God to help you to do something. You, do, you are not doing anything. Come on. And ask the Lord to help you to bring about change. Come on. Ask Him to help you to bring about change. You have people who live next to you. People who work with you. And you don't even share your faith. You don't let them know Jesus is Lord and Savior. It's time that you say yes, Lord. Sing that song a few times. I say yes, Lord. My soul says yes, Lord. My soul says yes, Lord. My soul says yes, yes, Lord. I want you to take note of something. Even though Jesus told his disciples that, you know, when Jesus left the earth, when he was taken up into heaven, all the thousands and thousands of people, only 120 persons, were gathered in the upper room. It tells us that not everybody who followed Jesus wanted that kind of responsibility. But observe, Jesus, part of his lesson is that he that believeth not shall be condemned. He that believes shall be saved. This tells me a very hard, hard thing. There are so many people in the church who are going to be refused by Almighty God because they did not obey. This is a sad thing. They did not want it to believe the way Jesus wanted them to be able to live. There are so many people who are living lives that they prefer to be comfortable with friends than to do what God says. And at the end of the day, there's a little old people saying, friends just take you. And they don't bring you back. They don't bring you back. It's time for you to say yes to Jesus. I'm going to lead you in a prayer and then hand you back over to the chairperson. I want us to pray this prayer with me together because we want to make a difference. Our commitment to God must be a higher commitment. Say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my ignorance, 
I ask you to open my eyes. Take my heart and make it pliable. Take the scales off my ears. So I could say yes to your will. Take away my sins and my doubts. And help me, O Lord, to do you. I am tired of just doing church. I'm tired of just doing religion. I ask that you strengthen me, O Lord. That you would bring me before men who are lost and who need the Christ. The saving grace of their souls. And help us to see change and salvation to these precious lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray for you. I'm going to pray. Lord, except you build a house, we labor in vain. Except you watch the city, I watch in vain. And this ministry that you have placed me over is not a ministry for smallness. We, 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 God, we don't think that way for ourselves personally. And therefore, we will not think this way when it comes to the attitude for our congregation and the work of you and the church of you. So, God, I pray that this prayer will be answered. Even the prayer that we prayed when we laid hands on the empty chairs of the church. That God in the spirit realm, that we would see signs and wonders. Oh yes, God. Your word says, and the people marveled at what you did. And then we read in the book of Mark, in the New Living Translation, that miraculous signs and wonders, miraculous, not just these signs, but miraculous signs and wonders. Lord, I want you to anoint the hands of everyone that would lay their hands to pray upon people that have need. Sometimes they may not even to connect by the laying on of hands, but God, they can connect by Oh Lord, just just talking to them. Let let breath the the breath of the Holy Spirit, oh God, come out of us so your presence can breathe on them, so that they would have change and transformation and conversion. God, we thank you that that a realness will manifest itself here at the church. Help us to see crip. Oh Lord, fill the capacity with two services on a Sunday morning. Yes, God. It's time for a two service on a Saturday evening. Because we are touching lives. The people in church is not doing religion. They are doing Jesus. God, bring this to pass. For your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Have your seats, please.